Okay, in a previous video we walked through installing ESXi and we went through some of the basic settings in uh, ESXi. I want to take a closer look now at how we would go about creating switches and port groups for ESXi. So I'm going to start by coming to our networking section and here you'll see the port groups we already have created. We have the VM network which is on vSwitch0, which is a default uh, switch that ESXi created. And we have the management network that's on ESX0. And both of these are our port groups. So I'm going to create a new, well, I'm not going to create. Let's take a look and see what we've got first. So here's our default e uh, VM network ESXi. Here's our security policy. We're not allowing promiscuous mode. We're not allowing forge transits. We're not allowing MAC address changes. We are using notify switches for the NIC teaming policy. We do have a failback policy or reverse policy. We don't have a shaping policy enabled. And here we can see where this is uh, associated. So our VM network is on vSwitch0, which does have an uplink port right here, VM NIC0, going up to our physical switches. Okay, and then we have one virtual machine associated with this, which was one we created in an earlier video. We'll play with that a little bit more in another video here in a few minutes. So I can edit my settings here. And here's my name, my VLAN ID, if I'm using one, which virtual switch I'm connected to, and I only have one for this one. And then our security options, these are all inherited from the switch our NIC teaming options, and our traffic shaping options. Now, one neat thing about this is that I can do different port groups on the same switch that have different security settings. And notice these are inherited from the switch. But let's say I created a um, device that I wanted to be an intrusion detection system or intrusion prevention system. Well, for that, I would need to enable promiscuous mode. So I could create a port group just for those types of devices and override and accept promiscuous mode on that particular port group. Then when I create my VM that's going to be my IDS or IPS system, I just need to make sure I associate it with the right port group. Okay, so now let's say I wanted to create something brand new. So I'm going to go back to my VM network and I want go back to my networking there we go and i want to create a new switch and then i want to add some new port groups to it so here's how i would do this i'd go to virtual switches and i've got v switch zero that has two port groups one uplink and as a standard switch i'm going to create a new one so i'm going to add a standard virtual switch now once you get to vcenter server and the ability to manage multiple machines at a time, you can create a distributed switch. A standard switch exists just on this host. A distributed switch can exist across multiple hosts, which makes it easier when you migrate VMs from one host to another. But since we don't have that option because we haven't installed vCenter server yet and we're just playing with the EXI SI console on the host directly, well, not the console, the web interface, we can only add a virtual switch. So I'm going to add a standard virtual switch, and I'm just going to call this one new VM switch. So I can set my MTU or my maximum transmission unit. Here's where I can pick my uplinks. And I actually only have two of them. One of them is already associated with my other switch. Now your uplinks are going to be your physical uh, network cards in your host computer that you can use to connect up to the rest of your physical network. So those are your uplink ports. And my VM NIC 0 is already activated or already used, so that leaves me VM NIC 1 is the only one that I can really use. So I can set my link discovery, listening, advertising, both, neither, whether we're using CDP or not. I can set some security options here, and this will be for everything on the switch. And remember, I can override this by going to a port group setting. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the default to be reject. And then if I need to create a different uh, group of settings, I'll do it on a port group. So I'm going to click add, and that's going to create my new VM switch. And you'll see right here, new VM switch, no port groups associated with it yet, one uplink, and it's a standard virtual switch. And I can come in here, click this, will show me my topology. Here's my uplink. Notice that's not green, so we're not connected. I have no port groups associated. Here are my switch details, my teaming policy, my security policy, and my traffic shaping policy. Okay, now let's say I wanted to create a port group and associated 
associated with this. Well, I, from here, I really can't do that. So I can add an uplink if I had multiple network adapters that I could use here. I can edit settings on my switch and expand and work with all of these. But I can't really add a port group here. So what I have to do is I have to go back to networking and here I'm going to go to port groups and I'm going to add a new port group. And this is going to be for standard VMs. And I'm still not using any VLAN, so I'm going to leave that alone. I'm going to put this on my new VM switch. And then here are my security settings. And I want to go ahead and inherit all of these from the switch. So I'm not making any changes here. So I'm going to just click add. And now I have my standard VMs are associated with my new VM switch. And then, of course, if I want to edit, I can click and edit the settings. And OK, so I'm going to go ahead and create another one. And I'm going to add a port group. And this is going to be for my IDS, my intrusion detection system. I'm going to put this on new VM switch. But this time, I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to accept promiscuous mode. Yes, I'm going to accept MAC address changes. And yes, I'm going to accept forged transmits, primarily just so we can see that we can do it. And I'm going to click Add. So now let me go back to my virtual switches. And in my new VM switch, I now have two port groups, no uplinks on my standard VM switch. So I'm going to click on that. And here's my IDS. And here's my standard VMs. Now, I already have a virtual machine. I haven't installed it yet. But I want to associate my virtual machine with the standard VM support group on this VM switch. So I'm going to go to my virtual machines. And here is my test virtual machine. And for my test virtual machine, I'm going to come up here and click Edit. And I'm going to find my network. Memory network adapter. There we go. And I'm going to change this to, and notice it's showing me my port groups, not my switch. So I want this to go to my standard VMs, which is a port group I just created. I do want to connect it power on, and I'm going to click Save. OK, so now if I go to my new VM switch, I can see that in my standard VM support group, I now have my test virtual machine associated with it. It's currently not connected because that hasn't turned green. But OK, so there we go. We have created a virtual switch. We have created a couple of port groups. And then we've associated a virtual machine with our new VM switch and our new port groups. So hopefully that makes sense. Remember, we're still doing this. We're going to work with vCenter a little bit later. But we're still doing this in ESXi, so we're doing this one machine at a time. But hopefully now you see how we can use that in our ESXi management interface.